Baseball, why not? Everyday Cafe Hotline, and it was media day today. He's probably still standing out there checking the dirt and uh, probably throwing BP. He is the head coach of the University of Virginia baseball team, Brian O'Connor. Hey, Oak, what's up, man? How much, Mac? Just uh, excited to get another uh, year of Virginia baseball underway, and we're looking forward to getting started. What beautiful weather we have. You know, I, I wish we were opening up in Charlottesville uh, this weekend, but uh, unfortunately we got to head down south, uh, down to Auburn. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be good. And isn't it great, though, you know, that rule that the NCAA put in a couple of years ago about teams all have to start at the same time? I mean, that was a great rule, wasn't it? Well, you know, Mac, the, the, the reason that that went in is, you know, you had teams in the uh, deep south or way out west, say Arizona State, they'd be starting their season at the end of January. And what, you know, we were all still, you know, could only play a certain amount of games. Sure. And at that time, it was 60 ball games, But they'd be able to spread their season out you know, three, four weeks longer than teams in the North, uh, which was to their advantage. And then they got to play less midweek games and and they used to, was able to use their, their top three starters more often. So it's the best thing for, for college baseball. I think we've got a good official start date uh, right now when we do start it, and, and we're looking forward to getting a rolling. Everyday Cafe Hotline is Brian O'Connor, head coach of the Virginia baseball team, ranked 13th, 14th, depending on what poll. Uh, Brian, i got to ask you the bad question. Is too much been made out of it? We uh, talked to a couple of reps. Uh, too many headlines about the bat, and, and how did you feel about the winter workouts? Uh, you know, How did the bat respond? Well, I think, Mac, you know, any time uh, there's change that happens, I think uh, some people can over – uh, react and you know uh, I was you know personally against the, the change of of the new bats. I just feel like you know college baseball is at an all time high right now and it's continued to climb and climb across the country. New stadiums re- are being built and who would have ever thought the day would come that you know the University of Virginia would draw 125 thousand fans to our games like we did last year. Yeah, so yeah. you know anything that uh, change I just um, you know I don't think is is good, but. You know, we're, not, we're all under the same parameters now, and we've had since this fall to swing the bats. Rawlings, fortunately, got us our bats in the fall, so we used them all fall and all winter. And, you know, there's been an adjustment period. The ball doesn't fly out of the ballpark as consistently as it did. But, you know, today we just finished up with an inner squad scrimmage, and, you know, we hit two balls out in a three-inning inner squad scrimmage. So, um, I mean, if, if you can hit Mac, you're, it doesn't matter what you're using going up there. Um, you know, but uh, you know it'll be interesting to see how it plays out in college baseball through the entire season. Yeah, did the kids do the kids like it or do they care? Uh, you know, they don't. I don't know if they really care. You know, uh, once they ad- adjusted and understood that it wasn't the same thing, and that everybody's going to be playing so called with the same weapon. You know, uh, that uh, you know they they adapt, and I think all of college baseball will adapt. We're, I'm, I feel very very fortunate that I feel that. You know, Rawlings has the best bat out there on the uh, market with these new standards, and fortunately we're swinging them. Yeah, Brian O'Connor, guest Everyday Cafe Hotline, getting ready to open at Auburn. They'll get three games down there, and they come back for a heck of a homestand, which we'll uh, talk about in a second. Well, Brian, every team is different. Every coach will tell you that. And, uh, you know, after last year, team that wins 51, and now you come back. How do you feel about these guys? I know you got to be energized this time of year, though, because, you know, just you're getting back in it and getting back in the swing, and you start on Friday. Uh, how do you feel about this? Well, I feel really good, Mac. You know, you don't know until you get into it. And this weekend is just three games out of 56 that we'll play in the entire season, you know, uh, versus a, you know, a football team. It, you know, it's one of your 11 or 12 mm-hmm. games, and every game is so important. Baseball is a little bit different in that way. And, you know, and, and you know the, the old adage, you need to be strong up the middle, Mac, in, in baseball. We've got a new catcher, a new shortstop, and a new center fielder. Now, I think that they're all very talented, you know, they just haven't had to do it on an everyday basis yet in our program. So um, I'm excited to see all those new players, you know, those three positions and other positions. I'm excited to see, you know, which players emerge and show that they can be the guys to be counted on. And I think, you know, in the end, I think that we have a chance to have a pretty special club. When you've got a guy, Brian O'Connor from the University of Virginia baseball team, when you've got a guy like Hulson who's who is such a stud and, uh, you know, and all the things that, that he does – what do you ask him to do in the off season and and in fall? I mean, how much can he sharpen? Well, you know, you can always get you can always get better, and I think he's better this year, Mac, than he even was last year. And it's uh, you know he's the he was the ACC pitcher of the year last year, and 
you know, he, he's a little bit stronger. He's a little bit more physical, which means that I think he'll be able to throw the ball a little bit harder, more consistently. Hopefully he's stronger uh, towards the end of the game. And, you know, I think through all of the experience that he's had, um, he's, a, he's a better pitcher. He's going to really uh, uh, make an impact in our lineup. I think he's going to be, uh, you know, hitting in somewhere in the middle of our order this year. And, and uh, so, you, you know, you're always pushing these guys. They always need to develop. They always need to get better. I mean, shoot, he's still a, you know, a 20 or 21 year old kid that um, has continued to try to progress his talent. Uh, moving forward, and I, I think he'll be better this year than he was in the past. I know how important, and you guys have done a wonderful job putting an emphasis on the pitching staff and having great arms. And uh, I know you brought in a couple of guys, a couple of first-year guys. How do you how do you work them in and work the freshmen in? Uh, you know, in your in your pitching staff and your pitching rotation. M- maybe second part of that question, Brian. How, how many guys do you have to rely on? Well, I think there's going to be three freshmen that we're going to rely on, and I don't know how much out of the gate, Mac, that mm-hmm. we're going to rely on them. But what you do is you got to be smart. You know, uh, you know, we've got some good veterans uh, on the mound, and you know, you sprinkle those freshmen in uh, at the appropriate time so they can gain confidence and they can gain some experience, and hopefully, as you move on through the season, you know, maybe by the midway point, now they're guys that you can really, really count on on a consistent basis because that's what's important. It's, uh, you know, when you put a pitcher out there on the mound, you want to have an idea consistently what you're going to get out of them. You know, they're not going to do the job every time, but you've got to know that they're going to throw strikes and they're going to give you a chance to win. And typically that's what, you know, true freshmen struggle with is the consistency part of it. And, you know, hopefully as we move forward, a couple of those guys will be able to help us out. You know, I didn't even add Brian O'Connor, our guest, Everyday Cafe Hotline, getting ready to hit the bus and uh, uh, get down to Auburn tomorrow and uh, get ready for a three-game uh, weekend with uh, with Auburn and UAB, who they'll open with on Friday. Is the uh, Everybody's calling it the shot clock, but the pitch clock, is there any concern about that? Did you guys have fun watch, uh, You know, working with that in the fall? Well, it's um, it'll be a little bit different, Mac. But uh, you know, we spent a lot of time in the fall and the winter, um, you know, playing our games under those parameters. And you know, what it's going to do, I think you're going to see the speed of the game pick up a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes it's taken teams, you know, two two and a half minutes uh, in between innings to get ready for the next inning. And now, you know, we've got 90 seconds to get ready for play to begin. And mm-hmm. and uh, no, I think it's a good thing. It'll, you know, uh, it'll pick up the pace of the game, and you know, once you get the players conditioned at the speed at which they got to go about their business, they get used to it. And I don't think that you're going to really see that it's going to be that much of a factor. Yeah, an interesting thing, you guys too on a bat. I mean, you're you're calling pitches, calling signals. You got to, I, I guess, the coaching staff has got to be pretty much on the ball too, huh? Yeah, you do. Um, I mean, you got to get your signs. And the thing about it, Mac, is it only applies with no runners on base. Uh, so once you have a runner on base, the clock doesn't exist anymore. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it, it takes some time getting used to, but we had to modify a few things. And, you know, I, I think uh, you'll see the teams uh, all adapt, and then you won't even really notice it. Uh, when we go down to Auburn this weekend, there will actually be a visible clock next to their scoreboard. How about that? Um, but, you know, in the ACC conference, there's not going to be a visible clock. It's just going to be held by a stopwatch by the third base umpire. Uh, the SEC chose to play uh, the, the rules within to have a actual mm. visible clock. How about that? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, it, 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 and the thing is, the clock is operated by somebody up in the press box. I mean, it's not an umpire. It's an employee of whatever <laughs> school you're playing sure. at. You know, so there's going to you know, be interesting to see, if, you know, is there arguments that come – from this on did they start it too late did they start it too soon and does that drag the game out because of that well it'll be interesting to see please don't tell me how far away please don't tell me we're close to replay in college. <laughs> uh, well I, I i hope not in our game I, you know i think the uh you know the imperfections of, of umpires is part of our game um it always has been part of our game and you know, uh, I, I don't think you'll see it in college baseball just because there's not enough games on television. Yeah, that's true. Well, you got a heck of a homestand uh, coming up with only three interrupted games with the Clemson series. But uh, you guys got a lot of home games coming up in February and March, and I know the fans are excited. Uh, uh, Brian, you guys done a great job, and uh, good luck at Auburn this weekend. UAB on Friday, Auburn Saturday, Arkansas State on Sunday, and uh, and come back with uh, you know a couple of good ones, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you when you get back home. Good luck this year, Brian. We'll talk to you soon. 
Thanks, Mac. Thanks for having me on. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Brian O'Connor, head coach, University of Virginia baseball team.